Hey everyone, I'm Mr. A, and today we're going to talk about finding the volumes of three-dimensional shapes. In particular, we're going to focus on the type of shape that I call a stackable object. Stackable objects come in lots of different shapes and sizes, and math has specific names for some of them. For example, you may have heard of a cylinder, or a rectangular prism, or a triangular prism. We're just going to lump them all into one group, and you'll see why in a few moments. Before we do, let me just talk about what stackable means and why I call them that. When I say stackable objects, I'm talking about three-dimensional objects that can be made by stacking congruent two-dimensional shapes. The fact that they are congruent two-dimensional shapes is really important to this notion. When I say a two-dimensional shape, I'm essentially talking about any shape that you could draw in your notebook on a flat piece of paper. So for example, you might start with a square, or a triangle, or a circle, or a hexagon, or even just some random squiggly shape that you draw. It doesn't matter what you start with, as long as it's a two-dimensional shape, then if you imagine stacking those on top of each other, like sheets of paper, if you stack rectangles on top of rectangles, you get a rectangular prism. If you stack triangles on top of triangles, you get a triangular prism. If you stack circles on top of circles, you get a cylinder. If you stack hexagons on top of hexagons, you get a hexagonal prism. And if you stack whatever this is on top of lots of copies of whatever this is, you get whatever that is. These are the kinds of shapes that I'm talking about when I say stackable objects. The reason I'm talking about all of these in one video is that if we understand how volume is created in a three-dimensional shape, we'll be able to see that all of these shapes have the exact same volume formula. That is to say, the way we calculate the volume is the same conceptually for all of these different shapes. What I want to do in this video is show you the common thread that pulls them all together so that instead of having to memorize a different formula for every shape, you can just understand how we create volume in three dimensions and you'll be able to find the volume of any stackable object. Once again, what makes an object stackable is that you get it by stacking congruent two-dimensional shapes on top of each other. You may be thinking, hold on a minute. If I stack two-dimensional shapes, they have a length and a width, but zero height. So no matter how many of them I stack, I'll never get any height. I won't get a third dimension. And while that's a reasonable objection to have, especially if you haven't taken calculus yet, you're just going to have to trust me that it'll work out. The best I can do in this video without getting into calculus and integration and limits and all of that is to tell you to think about a stack of paper. One sheet of paper is pretty close to two-dimensional. I mean, sure, it has a thickness. We could measure it, but it's pretty thin, right? It's mostly length and width. But you know from experience that if you take a piece of paper and put another piece of paper on top of it and another piece of paper, you know you're going to get height to build up. Of course, the reason this happens is that paper does actually have a height, but the idea mathematically is that if we make that height go closer and closer to zero, then that piece of paper becomes closer and closer to a mathematical two-dimensional object. What calculus allows us to do is take objects like this and let that height go to zero. So we look at something called a limit and we let it get as close to zero as we want and then we still can stack them up and create volume. We're not going to get into that in this video, but just trust me, it'll work out. A paper is a good thing to think about, a piece of paper, because it's pretty close to zero height. Let's begin our conversation by talking about a regular rectangular prism. I call it a fish tank because it kind of looks like a fish tank. When you want to draw a rectangular prism, what you do is you start by drawing the front rectangular face. Then you go to each of the three corners and you draw a line up and to the right at an angle. Then you connect those three points with a solid line in the back and you already have something reasonably convincing. To really make it pop and look 3D on your page, what you do is you add in these three lines in the back, but you add them dotted. And that helps reinforce that three-dimensional illusion. The reason I want to start with this shape is because we're all very familiar with it and we probably all know how to find the volume. The volume of something like this is simply length times width times height. What I'd like to do now is reimagine the volume formula for this shape slightly differently. I'd like to point out that this is in fact a stackable object. Can you imagine that if you started with just this blue rectangle and you started stacking congruent blue rectangles on top of each other, that eventually you would create this shape. Imagine this was a sheet of paper and you started putting the same sheets of paper on top of it. Eventually you would build up this three-dimensional solid with this length, this width, and this height. That two-dimensional shape that we stacked to create this object, I'm going to call the Big B Base. Every time I write it, I'll write it with a capital B, and when I say it out loud, I will literally say Big B Base. Big B Base is the area of that base two-dimensional shape that we're stacking to create the object. So this is the area of the shape that we're stacking. And of course, what is the area of the rectangle that we're stacking in this case? It's of course just length times width. 
So for this shape, the big B base is length times width. That means I can take length times width in the volume formula and replace it with big B base. So the volume of this shape is big B base times height. Big B base is the area of that two-dimensional shape that we are stacking to create this object. Here's the really awesome part. This is the formula for the volume of any stackable object. Whether you start with a square, a triangle, a circle, some kind of polygon, or some amorphous blob, it doesn't matter. Whatever the area of the shape you start with, if you multiply that by the height for how high you stack it, that's the volume of your three-dimensional solid. Before I go any further, I want to reiterate that it has to be the same shape that you're stacking, right? So you have to stack congruent shapes on top of each other. I need to choose a two-dimensional shape and then stack the same exact shape on top of itself. As long as I'm stacking the same shape, the volume will always be big B base times height. Before we go any further, let me just quickly say why it's big B base. Put a little thought box in the bottom here. So if I have a triangle, then we know that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. And we always use little b for that base. Uh, so that's little b base. We always use a lowercase b, so I call this little b base. And lowercase b is a one dimensional measurement. It's just the length of this one dimension. Big B base is a two dimensional measurement. It's the area of a two dimensional shape that we're going to stack into the third dimension. Now that we have a formula that's going to work for any stackable object, let's go ahead and calculate the volume of a few different stackable objects. Here we have a triangular prism, aka cheese wedge. Take a minute and think, what is the Big B base for this shape? Would it be this bottom rectangle? It's very tempting to think so, and a lot of students do when they first come across this shape, but remember what the rules are to be a stackable object. You need to start with a two-dimensional object, so a rectangle's fine, but then you need to stack congruent rectangles on top of it. Can you see that if you stacked congruent rectangles, this side would go straight up? Here what's actually happened is we're stacking smaller and smaller rectangles on top, right? As you get closer to the top, these rectangles get smaller and smaller. So this is not a stackable object, this is something different. That means we can't use that bottom rectangle as the base. Can you see what shape we need to use for the Big B base? So I'm going to choose the back triangle, and I'm going to imagine that I'm stacking it forward. That means that the height, quote unquote, that I'm stacking it is actually this three meters here, because the object that I'm stacking is sitting vertically in the back, and it's going to stack into this direction. So my height, quote unquote, will be three meters. Now that we've identified the Big B base, we're going to find its area, and then we can find the volume of the three-dimensional object. Since our Big B base is a triangle, its area is one-half base times height. Notice this base is a lowercase b, and that's the reason I call this Big B base, and this one is lowercase b. Sometimes I'll say little b base, but if we just say b or base, we're talking about a one-dimensional measurement like here. Now the height of the triangle we know. The height is five meters because this piece is five, so that's five. But I don't actually know the base right now. I know the hypotenuse, but the base and the height need to be perpendicular to each other. So let's take a minute to just think about the triangle by itself. How can we find the missing side in a right triangle? Yeah, Pythag. x squared plus 5 squared is 13 squared, which means x squared is 144, and x is 12, which means the base of this triangle, the little b base, is 12. And now we can go ahead and calculate the value for our big b base. Plugging in, we get that the big b base is 1 half times 12 times 5, which is 30. Plugging that 30 into our volume formula for a stackable object, we know the volume is big B base times height, which means the volume is 30 times 3, or 90 cubic meters, 90 meters cubed. Let me just talk about this 3 here. Remember that this H is the height, quote unquote, that we stacked the big B base. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a vertical number. So like in this picture, the 5 is vertical up and down. That's not the height of this solid object, though, because the big B base is this triangle in the back. The triangle went left, right, and up and down, and then got stacked in this third direction. So the third direction is the height that we're stacking it. In this case, that's the 3 meters. That is how high the triangle was stacked on top of itself to create this three-dimensional object. What if we're trying to find the volume of a cylinder? Now, if you look in your textbook, you'll find a completely different formula for the volume of a cylinder, but it's still a stackable object. What's the object that we're stacking this time? Hopefully you can see that if I start with a circle and I stack congruent circles on top of each other, I will create this cylinder. That makes the circle the Big B base object for this shape. Since the Big B base is a circle, its area is going to be pi r squared, the formula for the area of a circle. That means that that's pi times 15 squared, or 225 pi in this case. Where did I get that 15 from? 
Well, if the diameter is 30 meters, that means all the way across the circle is 30 meters, so the radius is just going to be half of that, or 15 meters. To find the volume, we simply plug into the formula for any stackable object. Volume is big B base times height, which in this case is 225 pi times 23, which gives us a volume of 5,175 pi meters cubed. This is an exact volume, and I always prefer to leave my answers exact. If you have rounding instructions, then you would need to type this into your calculator, and that will give you this number here, then you round appropriately. Take a look at this object. At first glance, this seems like a very different object than the ones we've been looking at before. Hopefully you would agree this is still a stackable object though. But I can hear you protesting, hold on, we didn't stack straight up. We're stacking off to the side at an angle. Well, you're right, but did I ever say you needed to stack straight up? I only said that you had to stack congruent objects on top of each other. Each of these circles is being stacked slightly to the left each time. So we have a circle, and then we go to the left, to the left, to the left, until we get to six units of height. Since the Bigby base is a circle, the area is going to be pi r squared. In this case, that's pi times 5 squared, or 25 pi. Since the diameter is 10, the radius must be 5. Then, of course, the formula for the volume of a stackable object is Bigby base times height, which in this case is 25 pi times 6, for a total volume of 150 pi units cubed. If there were inches, it would be inches cubed, centimeters, centimeters cubed, and so on. So I'm claiming that even though we're stacking up at an angle, this is still a stackable object, and the volume is still big B base times height. Let me see if I can convince you that that's the case. Imagine we had two piles of quarters. These two piles have the same volume. They're both made of the same number of quarters stacked to the same height. Imagine that I start to nudge the quarters on the right-hand side. As I nudge these quarters, the question you have to ask yourself is, does the volume of the object change? Well, of course, no, right? It's still made of the same number of quarters. The quarter has a certain amount of volume. So we should all agree that these two objects have the same volume. However, this has this sort of sawtooth jagged edge, and the shape that I was looking at in the last picture had a smooth edge on it. If you imagine each one of these quarters was half as tall, and there were twice as many of them, that wouldn't change anything, except that the little sawtooths would get smaller and smaller. And if you make the quarters half again as tall, and twice as many of them again, then you again have smaller and smaller little jumps, and the edge starts to smoothen out. If these quarters were in fact pieces of paper, and you just pushed each piece of paper the tiniest little bit over to the side, you would get a very nice smooth edge. The idea is that mathematically, we can make these pieces as short as we want. In fact, we can push them all the way down until they're essentially zero height, which is what we're doing when we're stacking these two-dimensional objects. And so it doesn't matter if we stack them off to the side or even up in a curly pattern. As long as we are stacking congruent objects on top of each other, it's still a stackable object, and the volume is still big B base times however high you stacked it. I have two final examples for you where we have to work just a little bit harder to work out what the volume is. Here we have another triangular pyramid. What makes it a triangular pyramid is that the big B base is a triangle. It has to be a triangle because if we tried to use one of these rectangular sides to stack up to create this object, notice that that rectangle would have to get smaller and smaller and smaller as we stacked it up. And that's against the rules. We have to stack the same object congruent two-dimensional objects on top of each other. Once we establish that our big B base is this triangle, we need to figure out what the area of that triangle is using one-half base times height, or our area formula for a triangle. This time, however, they didn't tell us what the height of the triangle is. We know that all three sides are five inches. It's an equilateral triangle. So we can use five for the base, but we need to know what the height of this triangle is in order to work out the area. You could do this a couple of ways. Since it's equilateral, you know that this angle here is 60 degrees, and you could use something like a tangent or a sine to figure out what that h is. However, if you remember your special right triangles, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and that'll let us get the answer much quicker, because in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the most important side is the side across from the 30. In this case, that is 2.5. It's half of that 5. And once we know that, we know the hypotenuse is double, which we can already see, and the other side, the h in this case, is 2.5 times the square root of 3. Once we know what the height of this triangle is, we can plug into our area of a triangle formula over here and work out what our big B base is. Doing that gives us 1 half times the base 5 times the height, which is 2.5 times the square root of 3. We can simplify that to 6.25 times the square root of 3 for our big B base. And then to find the volume of the object, all we need to do is take our big B base and multiply it by the height. Since the Bigby base triangle is being stacked 9 inches in that third direction, that's the quote-unquote height that we're going to use. So we have volume is Bigby base times height, 6.25 rad 3 times 9, which gives us 56.25 rad 3 cubic inches. This is an exact answer, 
and if we're asked to round, then we can plug that in our calculator. It's about 97.4279 cubic inches. Remember, this H is how high you stack your Bigby base in the third direction. So it's left, right, up, down, which means this is the third direction that we're stacking in, this 9 inches in this case. For this last problem, we're going to look at another cylinder, but with a little bit of a twist. At this point, you should quickly see that the Bigby base is a circle. We know the area of a circle is pi r squared. Since the diameter is 7 feet, the radius of this is only going to be 3.5, or half of that, which means our Bigby base is pi times 3.5 squared, which is 12.25 pi. In order to find the volume of the cylinder, we simply plug into our volume formula for any stackable object, Bigby base times height. The Bigby base is 12.25 pi, but what is the height? Remember, the height is how far we stack our Bigby base. If we're stacking this circle, it's being stacked in this direction to the right. So this is the height of the shape. In order to figure that out, we need to notice that there's a right triangle hidden inside of this picture. If I pull that triangle out and draw it separately, you'll see that we know one of the legs, we know the hypotenuse, and we need the other leg. This is Pythag again. Plugging into Pythag to find that missing side, we have h squared plus 7 squared is 25 squared, which means h squared is 576 and h is 24. Plugging that height into our volume formula, we find that the volume of the three-dimensional object is 294 pi cubic feet. That again is an exact answer. There's no rounding there. If they ask you to round, you plug 294 times pi into your calculator and then round appropriately. So in summary, whether you're stacking rectangles, triangles, circles, weird shapes, or polygons, it doesn't matter. If you're stacking two-dimensional objects on top of each other, and each object that you stack is congruent to the last one, then you are creating a stackable object. And the volume of any stackable object is simply big B base times height, where big B base is the area of the shape you're stacking, and the height is how high you stacked it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, feel free to leave a comment below, and as always, have a great day.